it's your life coach, Christina Harris, your friend, but more importantly, your BFF here on the Business Faith the Family Show. Make sure you check out BFF Show on all the different social media platforms, and I look forward to being an inspiration to your life. I look forward to pouring into you, but more importantly, I look forward to praying for you. Check me out. Get ready to be blessed on the BFF Show. On to new season and on to new things today. I'm far from perfect, I'm only a human being, human being. This show is the what else. You gotta know yourself. There's a difference between being saved and having a relationship mm -hmm. with God. God uses women in scripture. Yeah. Why Christ in this season? My plate was full and soul was empty. That's the first moment that I began to feel uncomfortable for what I had on me. And we pray, Lord, that we not just talk, but we walk. You're tuned in to Business, Faith, and Family with entrepreneur, author, and friend, your BFF host, Christina Harris. She has a wealth of knowledge, but more importantly, brings to you the love of God. Get ready to be blessed. Your life coach is here on the BFF Show. Welcome to Business Faith and Family. I'm your host, Christina Harris, here on the BFF Show. Today we will be talking about how your level of giving will determine your level of success. Oftentimes, a lot of people want to um, be blessed in their business endeavors, be blessed in their family, and a lot of the things that they put their hand to do. But too often, we don't talk about the real principles that is behind true success. No, I'm not talking about those seven steps to success. I'm talking about what the Word of God says about true success for your life. I want to come out of Genesis 4 today, but first I want to tell you how this is applicable to my life. The Lord has been really good to me. I have been able to um, live well, you know, as far as with my businesses and my real estate endeavors and be able to raise my children and things like that. But this year I started to experience a little financial hardship and I had to stop and ask God, where exactly was I going wrong in my finances? The Bible talks a lot about financial stewardship and it is our responsibility to seek the Lord for not only the provision, but instructions that comes with the provision. And sometimes we don't do that successfully. So I wanna sit here today and I would love to go over some principles, some financial principles that will not only help you get to your next level of success, but also help you do it in a godly fashion. As a life coach, I tend to um, consult a lot of business um, people who like to open up businesses and maintain their business, but too often we don't know exactly how to handle our finances. So I want to read this story today to you, and I want to bring out where exactly um, you may be in your finances, where if God is pleased with how are you handling the stewardship of what he gives you. I know for me, I tithe. The Lord has helped me to come into the full revelation of tithing, but he also recently just showed me how I was handling the other 90% of my income. And I thank God for his faithfulness as far as helping me to just be a better steward over what he gives me. Most times God wants to be able to trust you with what you have. And I wanna ask you, are you trustworthy with what the Lord has given you already in your hand to be um, steward over? So as we read in Genesis four, I'm gonna come out of um, verse one. It says, now Adam had sexual relations with his wife, Eve, and she became pregnant. When she gave birth to Cain, she said, with the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later, she gave birth to his brother and named him Abel. When he grew up, when they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, 
Cain presented some of his crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift, the best of his firstborn lamb from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel in his gifts, but he did not accept Cain in his gift. This made Cain very angry and he looked at dejected. Why are you so angry? The Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. But if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. I'm pretty sure you heard this story perhaps as a biblical tale growing up about Cain killing his brother Abel. And we probably perhaps focus so much on the actions of Cain, but did we ever look at why did Cain kill his brother Abel? And sometimes as we even bring it into more modern times, it was over the harvest. It was over the harvest. You know, God had blessed Abel's um, harvest, and that's because Abel gave God the first, the best of his lamb in the flock. And I want to first start off by saying, in a few chapters prior to this, we know that Cain and Abel's parents were Adam and Eve. And naturally, it's not our inclination to, to give. We're not, I, I, I always say, naturally, we are not good people. You know, I, I think it's, we have to learn to be good. I think there's a lot of bad in us sometimes. And um, being good is a condition. You know, we are conditioned to do good things. So I firmly believe that Adam and Eve had to have t taught their children about um, the principles of giving to the Lord. And when you give unto God for out of his love, out of the love that you have for God, out of the gratitude and appreciation, there's no cap on that, I'll say. See, in the religion world, in, in church, I'll say, they, it's instructed that you give a tenth of your income or whatever is the, whatever God had provided for you. When you love God, you move from what religion says and you move into what relationship says. And relationship is I love you and you can have it all. And you can have the best of the best that I have. And this is the heart that we see here with Abel. Not only did he just give any kind of sacrifice, he gave the best. And I think that is what God had honored. In the Bible here, it says that God accepted Abel and his gift. So I encourage you as you increase your, living, your level of giving, whether you are in church or whether, whether you are just sowing a seed into your local community or some organizations that will probably really need your help, I, I pray that God begin to teach you how to give your best. And it's not always about an amount. As I further go on into this study, I want to show you that there's different ways that you can give your best to God. Number one, the best way that you can give God a, a sacrifice that's the best, we'll say, is of yourself. When you give yourself to God and you don't keep any areas from him in your life and you allow him to use you in a way that um, typically you would not, the best gift that you can give to God is yourself. When you say, Lord, I want you to use me, I want you to take my life as a living sacrifice. So the best gift that you can give to God is yourself. Um, and this is in no order. The second gift would obviously be your time. Your time is important. Yes, you can tithe on your time. We all are award awarded the same amount of time in each day. So I don't care if you wake up in the morning and you talk and have your um, fellowship with the Lord. I don't care if it's at night or both. It's important to set aside, carve out some time for you and God to just bask in his presence, to get instructions for the next day, to ask for new revelation for what you've learned, the lessons that you've learned throughout life so far. Whatever it is that you and him um, commune about, just make it a priority that you are in communication with him often. And each day is um, a great start. And don't be too hard on yourself if you miss a day or two here and there. The second way is through your gifts, your skills, your talents, you know? 
that's a, another way that you can honor God and what you're doing and when you give to him. Sometimes you may not always have the financial means to do something for someone, but you can certainly bless them with your, your gift. You know, if you help a neighbor out who may need, who may be elderly and they don't have the energy to shovel or rake or anything like get the car wash or whatever it may be, you can use your gift, your skills, your talent, your resources to help them out. So those are just a few ways that you can give back to the Lord. But remember to give your best. You don't want a slothful attitude like Cain did. And the beautiful thing about God is he's rich in grace and mercy. Because if you read here in the scriptures, the Lord said to him, um, the Lord said, but if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out, sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you, but you must subdue it and be its master. He said, why do you look so dejected? You will be accepted if you do what is right. And I think as a loving father, as God is our loving father, because of Jesus, we are allowed to have him as Abba Father, you know? That moves from him just being God to being our father. So here he tells Cain, if you do what is right, I'll accept your gift. I'll accept you. And you always, while you're still here on this earth, you want to make sure that you're taking the time to do what's right. You want to make sure that you're taking the time that God is looking over how you're stewarding your life and the people in your life, your family members, your co-workers, your children. And while you have that time, you always can do it right the next day or the, from the minute you realize that you may be falling short. Another thing I want to read to you here in Proverbs 21, 27, it says, the sacrifice of an evil person is detestable, especially when it is offered with wrong motives. There's times when you may have given, and I'm pretty sure we all have experience given to someone only to have them throw it in our face, remind us when we're down on our lows of them being there and, you know, holding it over our heads. But God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that, you know. When you look at your life and you see all what God has done for you, you definitely should have a heart of praise. You should have a heart of praise. And the theme of tonight's message is given unto the Lord. When you give unto the Lord, it should be a, a mindset for you. It should be a mindset and not just a commandment. And the principle of seed, time, and harvest applies to your personal life, your business life, um, your ministry even. You have to, I always, I always tell people, you can have a projective view into your next season based on how you've sown in your previous seasons. So if I ask you now, what will your season of harvest look like next year? Will it be plentiful? And again, that's all determined based on how you did well with the seeds from, for your, pre, from your previous um, seasons. And if you, if you take time to see where you're planting and you want a, a harvest that is fruitful, so you want a harvest that is fruitful. So if you take time to see where you're planting and again, Tithing is really important. I'll tell you why. As I, in my experience, I remember when I first felt as though I didn't want to give to the church. I spent a lot of my time looking at what the church was spending their money on, the pastor, what type of car he drove, what type of suits he was buying. I allowed the enemy to keep me distracted with things that really didn't matter to the point where I remained disobedient um, and did not give my tithe. And it wasn't until I had to be delivered from that mindset, and I thank God for that because I was only stopping my own blessings thinking like that before. So when I started to tithe the 10%, I things started to really just become more in order for me. And I thank God for 
his faithfulness to even allow us to sow a seed. And don't, so don't get, I say that to say, don't get distracted. Sow your seed. Be joyful when you do it and watch God repay you back. He may not always give you a financial, financial blessing. He may give you more time here on earth with your children. You know, he may increase your business. Hey, he may give you a new skill even that will bring in revenue for you in the future. God never one runs out of creativity for you to be able to, for your gifts to make room for you, the Bible says. So I encourage you to sow your seed and like I said, if you're not part of a local assembly, you know, you can um, sow into someone's life. If you're constantly sowing seeds of good things, you have to reap a harvest of good things. So never, never, never give up when you are sowing. We're going to take a quick break here on the Business, Faith, and Family show. You're tuned in to Christina Harris. We'll be right back. your life coach Christina Harris your friend but more importantly your BFF here on a business faith the family show make sure you check out BFF show on all the different social media platforms and I look forward to being an inspiration to your life I look forward to pouring into you but more importantly I look forward to praying for you check me out get ready to be blessed on the BFF show On to new season and on to new things today. I'm far from perfect, I'm only a human being, human being. This show is the what else. You gotta know yourself. There was a difference between being saved and having a relationship mm -hmm. with God. God uses women in scripture. Yeah. A wild Christ in this season. My plate was full and soul was empty. That's the first moment that I began to feel uncomfortable for what I had on me. And we pray, Lord, that we not just talk, but we walk. Welcome to Business, Faith, and Family. We're back here on the BFF Show. I'm your host, Christina Harris. Today, we're simply talking about how your level of giving determines your level of sacrifice. I'm sorry, your level of success, I'll say. And yes, that's exactly what's required, a sacrifice. As we read the story of Cain and Abel, we always thought that how Cain killed Abel, we never thought about why, and it was all over the harvest and how Abel sacrificed the best of his lamb. So I want to talk to you today and simply remind you, and I wanna go over some of the stories that happened to me, how I got to this place, and. Uh, my spirituality with my given. As I shared previously, you know, I spent a lot of time focusing on all the wrong things, therefore hindering my, my own financial blessing. And too often we don't feel comfortable talking about money and things like that. We all want to receive, but not too often do we want to give. And as I talk about and look at my own story, I, I just think about how there were times where as a property owner, I'll say, of a lot of different property, there's times when I tithe, and I tithe faithfully, but there's times when nothing will go wrong with the properties for a long ex extended periods of time, and I'll have great tenants, and the business will be booming. There's, God never runs out of, of opportunities to bless you when you are, and it's all up to his discretion. By no means do I want to sit here and tell you that it's a genie effect. You give God, you make a wish, and it comes true. God doesn't work that way. He's a good father, so therefore he's not going to give you too much that you can't handle. And he knows your needs. And today, as I said, I want to just pour into you guys and encourage you to give. One thing, I, I, my faith has increased because the more that I walk with God, I firmly believe that he has brought me to a place of trust in him through situations. There's times, there was one time particularly, I just bought a brand new um, car, my first brand new car actually. And I was happy and um, God had made the provision for me to be able to do that. Months later, my car got completely totaled. 
And I was really upset because, you know, cars, they don't keep their depreciation and things like that. But God being so rich in his wisdom and just, just knowing all that's going to happen before it even happens, it just so happened that I fell on financial hardship a few months later. And because that car got totaled, I no longer had to carry the financial burden of the payments of the car anymore. And not only did I not have to carry the monthly payments of the car, I was awarded $13,000 back because the car that I traded in had um, still had a lot of value in it. It was still a newer car. And I remember at the time, I was a little upset with the Lord, if I can be transparent, because I felt like he took from me. You know, I felt like he took something that I really wanted, but it was only for a small period of time because he didn't, he, I felt like he was being thoughtful of me um, concerning every detail of my life because he didn't want that extra stress on me during the time when things was going to um, be at a low point for me. So, and, and sure enough, maybe a year after that, I was blessed with actually the car I really wanted. So when God does things, especially in our finances, trust that he has your best interest at hand. The Bible says he allowed all things to work together for the good. And I just encourage you to trust God with your finances. Don't just give him the 10% because God is so good that not only does he allow, he, when you start, I always say, when you start making some real money, you'll thank God that he only um, commands that you give 10%. And then he's so good that we get to write it off on our taxes most times. That's a loving father. But I don't want you to, I want you to move from religion into relationship. So that way you can have a spirit like Abel who says, Lord, you can have whatever you want and you can have the best of what I have. And watch your business, watch your family, your health, all those things will honor God and he will cause increase in your life. And so I sit here today and I just encourage you to make the best of what you have by giving it to God first. Let him be, he's the Lord of the harvest. So he determines what you need before you even need it. And as I sit here, I want to also remind you that when you read the Bible, I want you to look at, look for the grace of God. Look for the love of God. Look for the provision. You know, don't just look at what happened. Look at God as the father that he is. There's a lot of times where I question God's will, timing, and um, love for me even at times. But the older I get, I start, and because I have that relationship, and like all relationships, it's never perfect. So you have to keep perfecting it, keep working at it. But as I continue in my relationship with God, I'm thankful that he's forgiving. Even when I've messed up money, even when I bought too many shoes, um, he's forgiving. And he never, his love for me never fails. There may be times where I question if, you know, money was going to come when I needed it to. But as we always hear him say, he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. So I encourage you to go back and read the story in Genesis 4.1 about Cain and Abel. And again, I encourage you to have that giving spirit like Abel. You know, when you give to God, you, he's never really taken Sometimes God wants to see if he can trust you, if he can just trust you with a good thing. Can he trust you with your gifts, your skills, your talents? Can he trust you with those children to raise them to be godly? Can he trust you with your spouse to pour into them and help them be the best godly person they can be? Can he trust you as a business owner with your employees? Whatever it is that God has given you in your hand, you make sure you make God proud and be grateful for what he gives you. You know, a lot of us, there'll be times where I complain about my own life, but I always think that there'll be someone else that would love to trade places with me. So that instantly, you know, stop the complaining. And as we even talk about the story of um, tithing, the story of giving your best unto Lord, to the Lord, when you give your life, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, that is your best sacrifice that you can give him. See, you can't give God something that already belongs to him. 
you know, the car, the riches, the family, all that already belongs to him. He's, he's the one who blessed you with it. And even your life belongs to him. So when you give God back your life, you're giving your life as a living sacrifice. And Christ has sent his son, Jesus, to die for us. He's given us the best that he had so that we can be reconciled back with him. See, as we talk about Cain and Abel, their parents, Adam and Eve, because of their sin, because they fell short, we um, had allowed, sin were allowed to come into the, the world and we were out of the will of God. So we're born into sin, unfortunately. But God, he made a way for us to be able to come to know Christ, even with all of our sin. And sin is no problem for God because his son is much bigger than the sin that we do. So I encourage you that if you don't know Christ, if you feel like, you know, if you've blown it and you feel like you're a bad person and you do bad things, the Bible says that God forgives us and he will remove your sins as far as the east is from the west. And we know the east and the west never meets. And the Bible also says the, that there is a sea of forgetfulness, that God will cast your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. So I encourage you, if you don't know Jesus Christ for the pardon of your sins, I encourage you to pray after me even right now. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. And I believe that you'll write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Please forgive me and come live inside me. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe that if you said that prayer, you have become a new person in Christ. It's important that you get into a Bible-based, believing church. It's important that you network and meet people who, too, have the same love for God. And if you need prayer for your finances, for your restoration in your finances, if you know you haven't been a good steward over your finances, I'm even going to pray for you even right now. Father Lord, we just thank you for all that you give us, Lord God. We don't take it for granted, Lord God. We thank you for the provision that you make for us time and time again. We thank you for never leaving or forsaking us. Father God, we pray even right now for restoration in our finances, restoration in our marriages and our relationships, restoration in our businesses and in our jobs. And Father God, we just pray right now that you continue to bless us. We ask that you use us and use our resources like you've never done before. We thank you for teaching us um, the principles of seed, time, and harvest. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you've liked today's message, you can find us on BFF Host under Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. That's BFF Host, H-O-S-T. My name's Christina Harris. Thanks for tuning in to Business, Faith, and Family. I'm from perfect, I'm only a human being, human being. This show is the what else. You gotta know yourself. There's a difference between being saved and having a relationship mm -hmm. with God. God uses women in scripture. Yeah. Why Christ in this season? My plate was full and soul was empty. That's the first moment that I began to feel uncomfortable for what I had on me. And we pray, Lord, that we not just talk, but we walk. It's your life coach, Christina Harris, your friend, but more importantly, your BFF here on the Business Faith the Family Show. Make sure you check out BFF Show on all the different social media platforms, and I look forward to being an inspiration to your life. I look forward to pouring into you, but more importantly, I look forward to praying for you. Check me out.
Get ready to be blessed on the BFF Show.